So, a uh, little bit about me. Um, I am a software quality engineer at Red Hat. Um, I work on search and information retrieval systems, and it's been about three years since I've been working there. Um, this is my first time at DevConf or any in-person conference, so I'm looking forward to it. Today's agenda, we would uh, talk about the rise of AI models in the last couple of years, the need to test these models, and we would look at why testing AI is different from traditional testing. Uh, then we would look a little bit at how an AI model actually gets created. We would demystify that black box. Uh, then we would look at some of the testing strategies we can use for AI models. And then finally, we would look at a tool that can help us test this. So, generative AI in the last couple of years has evolved from science fiction to reality. Uh, the release of tools like uh, ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, Google's Gemini has opened the floodgates. Um, we have seen uh, new models come out every other week, uh, and they claim to be better than their rivals. So um, it has also transformed a lot of aspects of our daily lives. We are seeing um, personal assistants support chatbots and recommendation algorithms to code generating assistants and image and video generating AI as well. So, but with all this uh, great power comes great responsibility. Um, as AI is becoming more and more integrated into our daily lives, uh, understanding and testing these systems is no longer optional. Uh, it is really important to do that to ensure that they operate ethically uh, and they are also reliable at the same time. Um, so, you would ask me, what is the need to test AI models? What can possibly go wrong? Well, as it turns out, quite a lot of things. Uh, we, we recently saw in the news that uh, Air Canada's chatbot promised a discount to some customer and then the airline actually had to pay it, even though it was a mistake made by the model. Uh, we have seen other examples from Google's Gemini as well, wherein it says you need to add glue to a pizza to make sure the cheese sticks on it. So these are some of the uh, things that can go wrong if these models are not tested properly. Um, so the first thing that you know, the need to test AI model is to identify their weak points um, and catch unexpected behaviors like we saw in the previous slide early on. Um, then we also need to measure the model's performance because unless we measure the performance, we know how the model is performing, we won't be able to improve it further. Um, then AI systems like, uh, like, you know, traditional software, they are non-deterministic and they learn from the training data and evolve gradually over time. So this complexity means that their behavior can be unpredictable um, and we need rigorous testing approaches uh, to make sure they perform reliably under different conditions, different prompts, etc. Um, then we also need to um, increase the transparency of an AI model and improve people's trust in them because currently, if you look at a lot of AI models, ChatGPT, uh, Gemini, etc., you do not know how they are working, how are they, what is the decision making process and how do they arrive at the answer that they do for your prompt. So um, it, is mo it is kind of perceived as a black box uh, now amongst the majority. Uh, so testing it would make sure, you know, we, we, we can, uh, demystify that and make sure people are aware how it works. Um, then we also need to um, ensure their safety. So sp in specific applications like self-driving cars or medical diagnosis, uh, even if the model goes wrong once, it's going to have serious consequences, right? So <clears throat> we need to make sure um, the model is working as expected and it is able to handle any edge cases that, that come up 
over the course of normal use. Um, finally, there is also regulatory compliance. Uh, as we may have seen in the news, um, governments and industry bodies across the world are starting to um, define guidelines and standards for AI models um, to, to ensure that, you know, uh, the models are transparent and operate in a fair way. So testing AI models would make sure that the organizations are in compliance with those regulations, uh, which, which, is, which is always a good thing. So why is testing AI models different? So as we, as we just saw, um, AI models are non-deterministic, so um, th their behavior is not always predictable. Uh, a good example of this is if you um, send the same prompt to ChatGPT two times, you're gonna get a different answer both the times. So how do you test that with, with traditional testing techniques? Um, uh, the AI models also produce new and unseen content, specifically if you look at um, models that generate art or music. Uh, you, you, we haven't, they take the training data and generate new art which we haven't seen before. So that adds another layer of complexity to testing them. Um, then as we all know, as we have seen before, AI models are also prone to hallucinations. Uh, they generate plausible content that we think is correct, but it actually is not, it is factually incorrect. So then we also have uh, uh, a, a dilemma with the data because in the case of large language models, they are trained on a huge data set and it is hard to identify if that data is biased or uh, incorrect in some way and that would lead to discriminate your uh, factually incorrect outcomes from the model as well. So that's the, that's the challenge to identify inaccurate data and fix it before the model is trained on it. Um, then we, there is also a black box around interpretability. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there is slight difficulty in understanding how the model arrives at its decision. Uh, so for example, if you're sending an image of a cat to a model and it classifies it as a dog. How do you understand and fix it that why is it classifying it as a, as a, as a dog and not a cat? So that's, that's the black box there. Um, finally, there are also um, scalability challenges when it comes to testing because uh, AI models are continuously learning on new data. They are constantly getting retrained so uh, like traditional software, which you only test out after you have made a new release, after you have pushed a new change, AI requires continuous testing so that you can catch any bugs and also monitor the, moni uh, the model's behavior. Um, so these, the, these characteristics we have seen of AI and ML models require us to have different testing procedures than what we follow for traditional software. And we need to move beyond the currently established paradigms for traditional software. So um, deep looking at how uh, an AI model is trained, this is a very uh, high level flowchart of it. Um, so AI models essentially work by processing large data sets and identifying any features or patterns within that data. So the first step in any, uh, while training any model is to get the data and prepare it. So uh, AI models, as we have seen, they rely on vast amounts of data um, and there can be many sources for that data. Like it can be text, it can be images, music, etc. Um, so we need to analyze that data and make sure we uh, pre-process it to remove any duplicate values, any, any missing values or uh, something that's not in the correct format like, like dates, etc. things like that. Um, after that, we move to the uh, model's development. 
Um, so here we choose the right algorithm or or the architecture for training the model. Um, for example, like uh, ChatGPT or in natural language processing, we primarily prefer transformer models. So that is what we select in this stage, and then we move to training, uh, wherein the model learns from the uh, data set we provided in the first step. Um, after that, we move to model evaluation, wherein we check how the model is performing before it is actually deployed and pushed to production. Uh, we can look at certain metrics like precision, uh, recall, F1 score for the model. Uh, and based on that, we'll know how it would perform once it's deployed on production for a specific task. Um, then we move to the model deployment and inference. Um, so as we all know, model deployment, AI models require a large amount of GPUs. Uh, it's expensive to run them. So we need to figure out um, the services, the cloud providers, the infrastructure we would run it on, and then integrate it into whatever application or, or service you have. Um, so this this stage of uh, model deployment uh, bridges the gap between the development of the model and its practical application where it can start delivering value to end users. Then finally, we move to uh, the monitoring of the model. So as I mentioned before, uh, it, it gets retrained frequently. So continuous monitoring of the model's performance is essential. Um, as well as we need to make sure that the model is periodically updated with new data so that it is it is relevant to the info that is that is present today so that is a, a very high level overview of how an ai model is trained um, now let's move to some uh, testing strategies for ai systems so a, way, a, a very fundamental basic testing strategy is the holdout method. So here we split the initial data set we have into uh, two sets, the training set and the testing set. Typically, we follow a 70-30 or an 80-20 ratio. Um, so we train the model on the training set, that, that's the yellow part you see there. Um, and then once it's trained, we uh, assess the model on the testing set, which is data that the model has not seen before. So that would give us a, an idea of how the model is performing, at least a, uh, some basic metrics around it. Um, and this m method can be extended with uh, K-fold cross-validation as well, wherein we can have multiple uh, division in the data set. So that's the first uh, method. The next one is uh, adversarial testing. Um, this is where we evaluate the robustness of the model, um, make sure that it is not failing when you send a incorrect prompt or an incorrect, and ask, you know, try to get it to produce the wrong output. So here we, we try to generate adversarial samples and send it to the model. Uh, for this, we can uh, use two techniques. The first one is, uh, fast gradient sign method. Uh, it is just a single step uh, that uses gradients of loss with respect to the input data to create an uh, adversarial example for the model. Um, the second one, projected gradient descent, is an extension of that, uh, wherein there are multiple steps we can follow to generate the adversarial example. Um, so. As this would help us find any weaknesses in the model, and we can fix that and improve its resilience before we push it to production. The next part is uh, validating the data for these models. So data is the fuel that propels AI models, and it is critical to ensure that it is whatever data the model tra is trained on is accurate. So. We, we have some basic uh, quality checks on the data to make sure uh, it, it's accurate, it is complete and consistent. Um, then we can also validate the uh, 
data annotation. So if you're looking at supervised learning, uh, we typically feed a labeled data set to the model and it is trained on that. So the quality of the labeled data set would directly impact the model's performance. And therefore we need to make sure that it is accurate. The next part is uh, again related to data that is bias detection. So if the data set itself is biased, that, that would lead to unfair uh, outputs from the model. So in this stage, we need to analyze the uh, demographic representation um, as well as uh, uh, make sure that it contains, uh, the data set contains data from all the relevant demographic groups. Uh, we can use fairness metrics to analyze this. Um, and if we see there is an imbalance in the data set, we can use data augmentation techniques uh, like oversampling or undersampling to create a more balanced data set for the model. So by implementing these techniques, we uh, lay a strong foundation for the AI model that eventually goes to production. So uh, looking at one tool which can help us achieve this, uh, this is called Langchain. Um, it is an open source framework uh, for creating applications powered by LLMs. Um, and it is uh, designed to make it easy uh, when you're working with LLMs and trying to create one for your use case. Um, so some of the features of Langchain are uh, the first one is model interaction. Um, this lets us use any pre-trained uh, or large language model uh, with Langchain and perform tasks like, you know, uh, feeding some, feeding a new data set to the model or managing its outputs. Um, the second feature is uh, data connection. So uh, it is kind of similar to model interaction where we uh, connect it to external data sources to make sure it is contextually aware of that data for uh, for whatever task you need to use it for. Um, the next one is chains. This is actually interesting. So when you are using Langchain to build a complex application, uh, you may require other components as well uh, as and also maybe more than one LLM. So chains let you link all of that uh, in your data set, uh, in, your, in your model, uh, and that, that can be useful. Um, then we, then Langchain also offers uh, visualization and experimentation, uh, wherein you can play with different models uh, and analyze how, how they're performing and pick the best one for your use case. For Today, we would specifically look at uh, the evaluators in Langchain. So Langchain uh, evaluators essentially let you create feedback loops that improve your application uh, over time and provide insights to prevent regressions. So some of these evaluators use the concept of LLM as a judge. So that means leveraging the capabilities of a different LLM to assess the quality of these generated outputs and uh, how does the model align with what with your expectations. So based on some research, it has shown that this approach has about an 80% agreement rate with the human evaluations, suggesting that it can be useful uh, going forward. So the different evaluators in Langchain are, uh, the first one is string evaluators. It checks the predicted string uh, for a specific criteria, like if you want to make sure if it's not ex going beyond a certain length or things like that, you can use string evaluators. Uh, the next are trajectory evaluators. Uh, these are useful for things like uh, chatbots wherein you want to evaluate the entire uh, activity from starting to the end. So for example, if it's a uh, customer support stat chatbot, right? Um, you want to evaluate how it understands the user's problem, then acts on it to provide a solution. 
So you can use trajectory evaluators for that to get insights into how the model is arriving at a particular decision. Um, the next one is comparison evaluators. So this is uh, essentially comparing the output you are getting from a model from two different trends. Uh, as I mentioned before, right? If you use ChatGPT, you send the same prompt two times, you're gonna get two different responses each time. So this uh, compares those predictions and make sure whatever response is generated is relevant to the user's query. So let's look at an example of a, a criteria at a custom evaluator. So let's say that I'm creating a model to tell me math jokes, uh, right? So I have defined three criteria here. Um, the first one is to make sure it contains numeric or mathematical information since it's a math joke model. Then the output should be grammatically correct and it should be logical. So my let's say my query is simply tell me a joke. So you can see, and let's say we get a response, which is I ate some square pie, but I don't know the square of pie. So we can use Langchain to evaluate and check if this response meets all the custom criteria that we have defined above. Uh, and Langchain actually gives you this output, which I've added uh, at the end. So it checks um, and it uh, prints out that yes, it is uh, containing mathematical information like the like pi, which is which is a constant. Um, then it is also grammatically correct. It is in correct English, and the output is uh, logical as well. So, based at the end, it you know it gives you a conclusion uh, conclusion that yes, this uh, value y it meets all this criteria, and you are good to proceed further. So. That is uh, that is how Langchain works. To to conclude my talk today, uh, I would like to say that you know as we navigate this new era of AI models, uh, we need to understand that AI systems are not uh, infallible. They are not perfect. Um, they are always evolving and they require continuous scrutiny and monitoring to make sure they are working as expected. And in this uh, realm of AI, testing is just not a destination, but actually an ongoing journey where, the, where we can, where our adaptability and our vigilance in monitoring them will help us in making sure that whatever AI we use is always accurate and reliable. So with that, um, thank you for listening to me um, and I'm open for questions. Yes, it is as so the so to repeat your question, um, is it okay for some tests to fail in AI because of while well, testing AI because of the randomness? Yes, that is correct because whatever tests you have, you know, currently, whenever you retrain your AI model, that is going to change, uh, whether you have improved it or it, the performance goes down. So. All the tests may not pass, but whatever fails, that will give you insights that, okay, is your model improving? Has the performance gone down or, and based on that, you can make a decision uh, on whether you, you want to proceed further or do you want to take a step back? Any other questions? So by default, uh, to to repeat your question, uh, you're asking about what model was used in that code to evaluate the prompt. So by default, uh, it Langchain uses uh, GPT-4, 
you need an API key, but that's not a, a hard requirement. You can use any LLM as long as it is compatible with the OpenAI API specification. You just need to specify the, your API key or URLs and you can use it. So, yeah, um, is it safe to assume in LangChain that it's Gen AI testing Gen AI? Yes, that's, that is kind of what you can say. As I mentioned, it uses something called a LLM as a judge. So, uh, yes, it, it is true that it is AI testing AI, but with human uh, in involvement in between. Any other questions from anyone? Can AI write tests for testing AI? Um, at this point, I my my personal uh, uh, preference would be no, because um, that would mean that you know the same limitations that are with AI in the first place are going to creep down as well. Uh, with Langchain, we are at least specifying the criteria that we want to check, and then it's AI doing the rest. So maybe in the future, uh, but not right now. That's the good question. Any other questions from anyone? All right, I think then we are uh, almost on time. Uh, thank you for listening to me.